When it comes down to game development, one key thing that a lot of studios have to do is scale down the original ideas to fit a narrative that is actually something possible to be published in the time that is expected of them. And while Halo 2 had some definite deep cuts during its development stage, Halo 3 also did see several cuts along the way, and one pretty big campaign story arc that's been reignited in interest in the past few months when YouTuber, modder, and buddy of ours rejected Shotgun actually actually managed to resurrect the Guardian that was originally planned to be in Halo 3 and literally brought it to life as a playable boss fight through mods. Matter of fact, he even had Bungie designers who commented that the appearance of the Guardian was very similar to what they had planned during the development stages of the Guardian. And a lot of discoveries of documents that have been published over the years looking into the earlier development plans of Halo 3 suggests that there was this extra story arc that would have had the Master Chief face off against a Guardian in an area that may had aesthetically resembled the Guardian multiplayer level and would have served as a boss fight for some sort of level that would have taken place after the campaign level the Ark but before the campaign level the Covenant. And while we think it is really cool that over the years we've seen different things like design documents or plans of what this Guardian type campaign level could have been, there still was a ton of ambiguity as to what this level that would have existed between these two massive levels would have actually been like, but more interestingly enough, how would have this Guardian even played into the campaign's narrative? What role would it have and significance would it have on the story had it managed to make its way into the final release of the game? And while our intentions jumping into this actually were based off of us trying to figure out what's buried under Sand Trap and our crazy wild theory that maybe the Guardian was buried under there, led us on a huge goose chase that made us make some discoveries that we can definitively say not only are more than likely very accurate, but also with the help of a super secret, not so secret Bungie employee who worked on Halo 3 back in the day, being willing to chat with us and answer any questions we had, we uncovered some information that many fans of the Halo community likely never knew about for what this cut content out of Halo 3 would have actually been like. So we actually were doing a live stream when we decided to jump into this mystery and try to piece together our suspicions as to what was going on with this cut Guardian level. Now, years earlier, there were some design documents posted online showcasing a little bit of info about the Guardian Forest level, suggesting things like a train system, a flying section where you would fly either a Banshee or a Hornet, and then boom, face off against the Guardian. There was some hype stuff here about this cut level and everyone seemed to focus focus in specifically on this cut level, the Guardian, without necessarily realizing that there might have been larger implications of how the Guardian would have played into the overall story. This is where we really took a lot of interest, specifically because the fact that Rejected Shotgun had managed to discover the Guardian on the level Epitaph. It had those Sand Trap glyphs, making us think that it had some connection maybe to Sand Trap, then brought us all the way back to the Ark level, which likely would have taken place before the Guardian Forest. Okay, and then to make this even better, our boy Rejected Shotgun went ahead and teamed up with us to just try to recreate somewhat of a visualization of what this map could have looked like, and you'll see some of the stuff on the screen here because it's so incredible. Also, Rejected Shotgun just put a video out over on his channel showcasing kind of some of the things that he worked on, so if any of this stuff is interesting, please do go check out his video because it's really awesome just to be able to visualize some of this cut content. We decided to really search in on the arc to kind of begin and speculate as to whether or not there was any possibilities that the Guardian actually would make its first appearance on this level instead. Because we always thought it was a little bit odd that on the arc, the end of the level, we see a bunch of just sentinels flying off and it works narratively, but it would have been interesting if there was maybe something bigger going on here. And that's where we thought that maybe we would have started to see some sort of bigger buildup involving the Guardians, especially knowing this level was going to be the one before we went to Guardian Forest. So as we zeroed in on this specific level, there was one thing that always caught my eye whenever we were in the Ark, which was the designs that are on the wall when you're in the interior after entering the second indoor section of the level. We see a lot of these downward lighting fixtures or whatever you want to call them, and these types of wall textures or wall designs actually show up on the level Epitaph and resemble that Guardian hologram 
that we see in the middle of the map. Interestingly enough, if you pull up the files on the computer, one of the rooms in the indoor section actually has a label on it still from the earlier builds of Halo 3 called The Guardian. So next thing we did was we jumped online and started looking through design documents that were posted by former Bungie game designer Dan Miller, who shared these a few years back, which of course had that Guardian Forest document, but also another document called Grandfatherland, which from the looks of it resembled that of the Ark. Now, interestingly enough, in this design document, it explicitly says that there's a part of the level where the Guardian makes its appearance. And it's kind of this big moment that is a big catalyst taking the story likely into that finale of the second act and beginning of the third and final act. I don't think it's crazy to think that this room that's still labeled Guardian in the game files and has these textures that show up on a multiplayer level that literally has the Guardian in a hologram form right there would be too far off as a consideration, leading our suspicion that at some point on the arc, the Guardian is reawoken and maybe he just kind of yeets off into some random direction and finds his way into the Guardian forest and Master Chief, after fighting some scarabs, decides to go and follow the Guardian. Guardian. Now, we still don't know what significance that would have for the story, but maybe we're getting somewhere and things can start to tie together a little bit closer. Now, at the point of doing this level of research, we only knew the main surface level information that most people knew about the Guardian. But in the process of us looking through these documents that Dan Miller had posted, we of course followed him on Twitter and actually got a follow back of all things. And even a greeting message from Dan Miller like the Dan Miller, the guy who's designed iconic Halo levels like Crow's Nest, Halo, Teari Plaza, NMPD HQ, Coastal Highway, New Alexandria, and The Package. And honestly, he was just down to chat about some Halo stuff, was willing to answer pretty much any question we had, and just seemed like a really chill dude altogether, and we really appreciated that because not only was he totally cool with us sharing all this information on our channel, it was just really cool to uncover some things that were planned for Halo 3 that never ended up actually making it into the game. So we started things off just mostly asking about the cut Guardian, and we got a lot of really interesting information information that changes our overall perspective of how the Guardian would have been implemented gameplay-wise into Halo 3. Now, he acknowledged that the Guardian was going to be based on the Ark, and then kind of talked a little bit about how these early stages of the Guardian, which, mind you, were cut relatively early in game development. This wasn't some sort of last-ditch thing that was cut in the end stages of the game. Something cut relatively early on would have actually been a introduction to a enemy class that likely would have filled out and expanded upon the Forerunner class of enemies that already were in Halo 2. To be explicit in what he said specifically, he said kind of if you thought about Sentinels being the Grunt, the Guardian would be agile and powerful like an Elite is, but nothing like the Elite in terms of character or animation. In fact, the Guardian would have only been fought one on one or with Sentinel reinforcements. We would have introduced it in my level that was cut Guardian Forest. Now, he even went on to say that there would have been a final fight with the Guardian at the top of the Ziggurat in the final Halo level. We were looking at carving out the Ziggurat to fight it, but we were having problems making that work. Likely where that standoff at the door is when you typically have to wait for Spark to open the door or when you're on your way out going to the Warthog Run section, just the top of this building here. So then I asked him to elaborate a little bit on the Halo level involvement of the the Guardian and asked if it would have been like a final boss fight. And he said, yeah, it was a final boss, kind of like Hunter class mixed with Elite, which to us kind of changes the perspective of how we perceived this encounter. Now, of course, we're basing this off of a text conversation, so it's hard to get the full perception here, but we would think that these Guardians would have been more like a heavy reinforced enemy that you face off against in a shorter encounter than a long drawn out boss fight type thing. I asked a bit more about the inspiration behind the Guardian Forest level and what it would have looked like considering the Guardian multiplayer level aesthetically looks so amazing. And Dan Miller gave us a little bit of information saying that Guardian Forest was a large ambitious level. It was probably a little too ambitious. It also told the story of how the Covenant fleet was destroyed, which answered a question I didn't even get into yet, which would have been what significance the Guardian would have had in the overall storyline of Halo 3. And he talked a little 
little bit about what the first encounter with the Guardian would have been like. It would have had just one form and it was going to feel kind of like a one-on-one -on -one Slayer match. I then went on to ask if that boss fight with the Guardian on Halo would have been the same Guardian from Guardian Forest or a different one, kind of like how we fought multiple Scarabs as these types of encounters throughout Halo 3's story. And this was the next part that was incredibly interesting to me, where Dan Miller said, I think the intent is you'd fight maybe six total across four levels. We had plans to do a Forerunner City. All of this was trimmed down early though. So like we were starting to assume, the Guardians actually were likely to be spread out as specific encounters, kind of as a mini boss fight or just a stronger enemy class you would face off against, with the one on the level Halo at least acting somewhat like a hunter class enemy. You know, a bit quicker, but the idea of encountering or facing off against a special class of enemies when they drop in always has a significant feeling when you are playing through a Halo campaign. And so of course, because I wasn't willing to give up the idea of the level epitaph maybe being connected to the Guardian, I asked him if he knew anything about the hologram of the Guardian in the level epitaph and how the name epitaph might tie into something. And he pretty much just said, I think the multiplayer guys liked the look of the Guardian, so they just kept it in epitaph. Now there was another level called Forerunner City, which we've seen a lot of people talk quite a bit about, and it even showed up in Halo Legends in the episode Origins, which is kind of cool. However, they decided not to do the Forerunner City. They wanted to pull back and put the Forerunner to be more mysterious and not necessarily something relatable. He actually compared this to Boba Fett from Star Wars. I don't think we wanted to Boba Fett the Forerunner, which to me makes perfect sense. Answering some more questions I had about the level Guardian Forest, he said that it started on a Forerunner train. My idea was to have a series of elevated tracks through a forest and have a collection of supply cars coming together and next to each other forming different layout configurations, forcing players to react to different spatial setups with Covenant coming in on them. Kind of like an aerial fast version of the Halo 2 level with the Forerunner skiffs. After that, you fought up through these massive tree tower structures like the Guardian multiplayer map. That's where you were introduced to Guardians and fought them. He also elaborated that on the level you would fly between three large structures trying to interact with them and he kept this idea even though this level was cut and rebuilt it into new alexandria for halo reach at the end however once you activated the three structures, it would activate a mega sentinel that would arise from the forest about the size of the city, which would then go up and attack the Covenant fleet, which of course is hugely massive if you think about just how cool this would have been if this ended up making its way into the story. Now, of course, this obviously and very clearly sounds like a super ambitious level, and it's understandable why we ended up not getting to see it in the final release of the game, though it is so cool to kind of get a peek behind the scenes and see what would have come from this type of level. The fact that this mega sentinel thing would have gone up and destroyed a covenant fleet is incredibly awesome, but also the other thing that we found really interesting is the fact you would have multiple encounters with guardians throughout the last four levels of the campaign. And nonetheless, this was so cool to get all of this insider information. We're extremely appreciative of Dan Miller for helping us out with this video topic, and the fact that we can even share this information is really cool. I asked him if he was okay with me sharing it, and he was like, uh, yeah. I mean, the game's 13 years old and I've talked about it with other people before, so go ahead or something like that. It was really funny. I also asked him about the Halo 3 ODST glyphs, which he revealed all the secrets to me about. So that was kind of cool. I I'm joking about that one. He told me that he didn't know about the glyphs and he said he wouldn't be surprised if they had meaning but broke before the ship. And he also said, I know they were working on something, but with secrets like that, you can't fix them if they break past a certain point. But again, I don't know. So that mystery rages on. So this was actually a really awesome awesome experience and the fact that we got to share it is even cooler. Matter of fact, Dan Miller is now working on a super top secret project that he is extremely excited about and they're in hush hush, they can't talk about it, but they're working with a group of industry veterans from AAA Studios. There's some people from Bungie there as well and he said that he hadn't been this excited about a project since my early Destiny days when I worked on Vault of Glass, which is one of the most popular Destiny raids and is really cool. So we're really excited to see what ends up coming from that project down the road. So yeah, it was really cool to be able to introduce one more piece of the puzzle or one more link in what would have been in this cut Halo 3 level. And that's something we think is extremely fascinating. 
Also, if you watch this far in the video, if you could consider subscribing if you're not already, maybe we just jumped up and you're recommended or something like that. And if you go ahead and actually hit that subscribe button with notifications on, you then will get notified every time we put a new video out and then you won't have to wait for the YouTube algorithm to do its job. We'll just be there. To everyone else, thank you guys for being subscribed and for all the support. Otherwise, that's it for today though. We'll see you guys next time with a new video. See ya.